Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be setting up control surface throws with iNav. I've seen the question of throws pop up a few times over the last few weeks in the iNav fixed wing group and I also need to set up the throws on my HeWing F01 wing so I thought I'd go through the process with you guys here. At the moment I've got everything set up on my desk so let's head over there and I'll show you what I've got set up. Okay, so before we start sorting out the throws, there's one very important thing that I need to mention, and that is about flight modes. You need to be in manual whenever you're setting up the control surfaces, especially when it comes to setting the throws. So I'll give a quick example why. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it there, and I'm going to go full up elevator and full left. And you can see the amount of throw we have there. I'm just going to switch into acro. And you can see we've got about half a throw. Now this can vary depending on how much feed forward you have. So ac acro and angle are basically the same. But as soon as I switch back to manual, you'll see I get the full deflection of the servo. So when you're setting this up, make sure that you are in manual mode. Right, so there's nothing overly complicated going on. The wing is off the plane just to make things easier. I have my F405 WSE, which I'm actually going to be using in this model, a standard RXSR receiver, which is you know, connected and bound to my radio. But I'm powering the servo through a BEC, so literally just a signal wire coming out of here to the servo. And then I've got a BEC powering the servo tester. So there's two, two leads coming out. One just goes to the servo. The other one is to share the ground with a flight controller. So yeah, other than this sort of bit here, it's basically identical. It's just so that I can run it in iNav without too much um, messing about. Right, so what do we need to look at? Well, first of all, we should be looking at the manufacturer's manual because all good manufacturers should give a range of throws for each control surface on the model. Now, HeWing have not done that with this model um, and I believe the diatone manual was exactly the same and to be fair I've seen other well-respected brands who do put throws in their manual but I've spoken to them and know that they're complete guesses. This is something I really really wish the, the FPV plane producing manufacturers would address because if you look at traditional line of sight planes the manuals always state a range of throws for each control surface, starting at the more sedate end of a range up to the, the more aggressive range, but everything in there will be safe to use. Thankfully, we have Lee over at Painless 360 who has been flying the Ripper quite a lot and has said that throws on this for the roll, you want around eight to 10 millimeters, and for the pitch, you want around 10 to 15 millimeters. So setting up the actual throws themselves is identical for each control surface. It's a case of, first of all, getting the values so we, we know what we're working with, and then just adjusting this linkage so that we have that amount of throw. With an Elevon like this, there's a bit more into it. Same with a VTEL, because in this example, we have a roll and pitch that needs different measurements. And I'll show you how to do that. It's, it's again, nothing too taxing. We just need to change some stuff in the mixer. So at the moment, the mixer that's loaded is a pure 50-50 flying wing um, mixer. And um, we can see that that's working normally. So if I hold the wing up like this, this is why this is nice and easy. You can see if I just do the elevator, how much throw we have, if we just do the aileron, we have the same amount of throw. And then if we do both, we have masses. <laughs> That's because it is combining that with that, or that, I should say. So you basically get, you know, each one is 50%. So that is the full throw of the control surface. So if we imagine for a second that this is a regular elevator, what we need to do is, first of all, get the right amount of throw. Now, to do that, you want to adjust this bar. And the way that you do that is using the holes here. Now, on the servo end, the closer you get to the servo, the less throw you have, but the more torque you have on the control surface. The further away from the servo that you get, the more throw you have, but you do lose that torque. 
And on the control surface end, it's the opposite. The further away from the control surface itself, the less throw you have. And the closer you get, the more throw you have. So I can show you as an extreme. So let's try and get this in shot. So if we do uh, the down elevator, which is actually need, needs reversing, but I've not set any of that up. You can see there roughly how much there is. And I measured it, it's about 12 millimeters. All I'm gonna do is whip out this screw. So that was in the top hole, and now I'm gonna put it down the bottom. Obviously it will mess up the centering, but we're not worried about that at the moment. I'll try and get this nut back on. All right, so you can see it's actually not really changed the centering too much on this. But now if I move the control surface, you'll see that there's a hell of a lot more throw. It's almost double by the looks of it. So what I'll try and do is get a side by side with the two uh, images, but you can see there is a lot more throw now. And that's just through moving the hole. So that is how you increase or decrease the throw. So what you would do is to measure it, you can get things like this, which are throw meters. But to be honest, on small things like this, they're really too big. They, they're just too big and bulky. If I put this on, you can see it barely fits on the wing. I'll try and get that lined up. There we go. So hold it about there. And now if I go up, you can see that that is almost 20 millimeters, pretty much yeah, 19, 20 millimeters, whereas before it was about 12 millimeters, which is about there. So that's one way of doing it. Or you can just use a regular ruler. If you're using a ruler, one important thing is obviously this trailing edge is about two millimeters thick. You need to go from the same side. So if you're measuring from the top of the wing like here, you need to measure to the top of a wing. No matter which way you're going, you always measure from the same surface to the same surface. It's not about uh, measuring the, the hole. So what I'm gonna do is put that back in the top hole because that's gonna be about right, I think, for the movement. It might be that there's too much, but I really don't think I can move this down towards the servo any more than it is. It's already sort of embedding itself in the foam a little bit when I uh, go right forward. So that's probably going to be the maximum of our throws. If we wanted, we could dial it down in software, which I'll show you how to do that in iNav in a bit. But to be honest, I think we'll probably be fine. Right, so that is our control throws setup for this model. It's about 22 millimeters total throw. Um, so that should be fine. Right, the next thing is you, if you want equal throws, you want the uh, control rods vertical to be 90 degree to this angle here. You don't, it's not based on the servo, it is based on the rod to the servo horn. So if I wanted this at 90 degrees, I would need to take that servo horn off and move it forwards a bit and then put it back on. Uh, and that will give you equal throws. The way it's set up at the moment, where it's actually a slightly greater angle, what I get is something called differential. So if I do, uh, obviously this is reversed, if I do down on the control surface, it's actually going down about nine uh, millimeters. And if I go up, it's actually going up about 12 millimeters. So what that gives me is what's known as differential, which actually on a plane like this with no tail, it's actually gonna be beneficial. And people put it on gliders too. It's basically so that there's less drag on the underside when you're turning, which helps keep the, the nose level. Obviously a flying wing has no tail to keep the nose level during turns. So having a bit of differential on there will actually help keep the nose in the right place. So I'm quite happy with how that's set up and just having that bit of differential. The next thing that we need to do, now we've got the froze and we've set up our 90 degree is actually get this level. You can see that I'm about, yeah, about a millimeter or two above this angle which if I needed to add reflex, that would be fine. If you're adding reflex, you just want it set above. But with this, the reflex is built into the wing. So if I hold it up, you can see how the, the trailing edge sort of swoops up a little bit. That's the reflex. So what we need to do is get this level. And to do that, we're gonna take this off and we're just gonna unscrew it. 
Now, hopefully this will unscrew easier. I did I had to screw it in with pliers, but we shall see. So I'm just going to do maybe, oh, no, I'm going to have to use pliers. I don't want to mess up control uh, horn. So what I'll do is I'll come back. I'll just do one turn for the minute. If we need to do another one, we can. And I'm going to put that back in the servo. This is a nice tight fixing. You want it, don't worry if it feels really tight, it will be plenty to move, uh, but you'll do better from not having any slop. All right, so we'll get that nipped up. I need to turn that around a little bit more. It's a bit better, could do with a bit more. When you're testing this, I know it's a pain in the ass, but you do always wanna make sure that you do everything back up because if it's in there loose, you, you know, can find that it's a few millimeters different. So that is nicely nipped up. And yeah, it could still come back a tiny, tiny bit. Right, so while we're talking about slop earlier, you notice that this has got a little bit of slop. It's because these ball joints are actually a bit crap. I will be getting new ones to replace them. But all that, all that play is actually in that ball joint. Um, this end is absolutely rock solid and the going through the pin is absolutely rock solid. So it is just that ball is a little bit loose, which I will get some better ball joints to uh, sort out. But for this demonstration, it's absolutely fine. All right, there we go. That is as good as it's gonna get, I think. Nicely in line, get that nice and level. So now you can see what throws we've got. So, and how the combined works. Now, I don't know if you can notice it, but look at the control horn and how it's twisting. Now, this is even with a ball joint. That is because the control horn is doing, yeah, in line with the airflow. It's not in line with this hinge. If it was at 90 degrees to the hinge, you wouldn't get any of that torsion at all. So that is one reason why I fitted that ball joint, is to try and get as little binding on that as possible. But that is working nicely. So if that was an aileron elevator or rudder, we're basically all set. We've got it level with our part of plane we're comparing it to. We have the right amount of throw and we have yeah, the correct geometry for what we want. So the next thing that we're gonna look at is how to adjust this mixer for the elevons. Cause as I mentioned, we wanted 10 millimeters or 12 millimeters on the elevator, but we only want about eight millimeters uh, on the roll. So to do that, what we're gonna do is have a look in iNav. So I'm just connecting up to the configurator. And as you can see at the moment, this is a standard 50-50 on the pitch and roll. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just try dropping the roll down to 40 and bumping the pitch up to 60. Now we're still working with 100%, that's why you want each one to add up to 100. So for each servo, so this is servo three, we want these two values to add up to 100. So we'll save and reboot. And what I'm also gonna do is pop into outputs and reverse uh, this servo just so that it should be working the correct way. So let's reverse servo three, save and reboot. Okay, so this here is, as I mentioned, the left wing. So now we should have down is up, <laughs> up is down. And if we roll to the left, that's going correct. Right, so you can see now, if I try and get my finger in line with where we are with the elevator, I'm not moving my finger, but you can see the roll is a much less so now what we need to do is obviously measure that. Right, there we go, let's do this quickly. So on uh, pitch, we have 13 millimeters. On roll, we have nine millimeters. So for ratios, that's probably about right. That's slipped a little bit, let's try that again. Yeah, about nine millimeters roll and about 13, 14 millimeters pitch. So what we could do, is that's about right for the ratios, but what we could do is just dial it down a little bit. And the easiest way 
is to do it in the rates here. So if we change that to 90, change that to 90, maybe it'll work with just doing a save so we don't have to reboot. And what I'll try and do is get that back in the same place. Now if we go pitch, we're at about 11 mil. Roll, we're at about seven mil. So we've gone a bit too far. So let's stick that at 95 and 95. We'll save and let's have another look. So pitch, we now have about 12 and a half mil and roll, we have about eight mil. So that I'm gonna stick with as being good. So there we go. That's all we really need to know about setting up control surfaces. We know how to adjust our throws so we get the correct amount of movement. We can adjust our linkage to get the 90 degree angle if you need equal throws either side. We can micro adjust so that we get our initial trim dead level with the adjacent body part of the plane. So we got everything sorted. But to be honest, this is probably something that a lot of people are underestimating. Get it, getting this set up will get you a much better flying plane. And if you have too much throws, that can cause you problems. Too little throws, likewise, can cause you problems. Some of us may be a little slack at doing this, but there are a lot of manufacturers that just don't include the information in the manuals. And that's something that really, really should change because it is pretty much as important as setting up the CG. If you don't have enough throws or you have too much throws, you're not going to have a plane that flies very well at all. And potentially you'll have a plane that flies so bad it's uncontrollable. I've seen people on the INAF fixing group who have said, this plane flies like garbage. Every time I fly it, I crash it. And basically we asked for a video of their control surfaces and they're at 45 degrees. You know, th this is not, <laughs> these are not 3D planes. <laughs> Having that much throw is massive, really. Um, so that's the pitch and roll individually. Having that just for pitch or just for roll is ridiculous. So yeah, we, we should be getting on at the manufacturers more to have tested throws in their manuals because it is a pretty important thing that they're, they're just not including. Especially when some of these manufacturers are claiming that they do a lot of in-flight testing if that's the case, then putting throws in a manual should be an absolute piece of cake because they will have upper and lower limits that they can just put straight in there from their test flights. So there you go. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button and that bell icon because that will help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to set up their throws too. Again, this is a really important thing. And when you're flying it like you stole it, you really want a nice controllable model. So thank you guys. See you on the next one. Bye.